Space, the final frontier. This is the Observer's Notebook, the official podcast of the Association of Lunar and Planetary Observers. Its mission to explore the solar system, to seek out new observations and data, to boldly go where no podcast has gone before. And now the host of the Observer's Notebook, Tim Robertson. Hello and welcome to episode 134 of the Observer's Notebook, the official podcast of the Association of Lunar and Planetary Observers. I'm Tim Robertson, the host of the Observer's Notebook and also the coordinator of the training program within the ALPO. Thanks for downloading and listening. The ALPO conducts and analyzes observations of various solar system bodies and associated phenomena, and publishes detailed reports concerning these uh, observations in its quarterly publication, The Journal of the Association of Lunar and Planetary Observers. This podcast depends upon donations from you, our listeners, to keep it alive. If you enjoy what you hear on the podcast, you can donate to it via Patreon. You can give as little as $1 a month. If you feel even more generous, for $5, you receive early access to the podcast before it goes public. For a monthly donation of $10, you receive a copy of the Novice Observer's Handbook. And for $35 a month, you receive producer credits on the podcast. You can help us out by going to www.patreon.com slash Observer's Notebook. And if you'd like to join the Alpo, you can for as little as $18 a year. For more information, you can visit us on the internet at www.alpo-astronomy.org. And you can also find us on Facebook, the ALPO. Just search for ALPO Astronomy. And this podcast also has a Facebook page as well. Just search for Observer's Notebook. And if you enjoy what you hear on the podcast, please subscribe. That way you'll never miss another episode of The Observer's Notebook. And now, episode 134, and we're going to talk about a brand new book that just came out, a great solar system astronomy book. Enjoy! All right, I'd like to welcome everybody back to this edition of the Observer's Notebook. You know, there's a lot of astronomy books out there, but there's very few that are a guide to planetary observing. It's real small. But one that's been on my shelf for many, many years, and I I always consider the gold standard, is the introduction to observing and photographing the solar system by Tom Dobbins, Donald Parker, and Chick Capon. Well, recently a new book came across my... uh, my library. And I have to say it's knocked off that book. (laughs) It's one of the best books I've ever read and it covers everything. And we're very lucky today to have on the podcast directly from France, Christophe Pellier. Welcome to the podcast. Well, hello to everyone. (laughs) Now, before we start talking about the book, why don't you just talk about yourself a little bit, give everybody a background about what you do and Yes. Well, I'm uh, 45 years. I live in Nantes, which is a a big town near France's western coast. And uh, I work as a public agent in uh, the the local administration where I control the use of some European phones. And uh, my main interest as an amateur is the following of the planet's phenomena and the methods to actually observe that. My main telescope is a 12 inches Altas Dobsonian from Skywatcher. And I also own a smaller 18 8 inches Newtonian that I am using for spectroscopy. Oh, my. So, uh, yes. Okay. So, what, what sparked your interest in astronomy and the planets? Well, I started to be interested in astronomy as a very young child during the 80s. My parents owned a, an old fashioned small refractor with which I discovered the moon and the rings of Saturn. And I believe that many of us have made the same experience. Mm -hmm. And I kept observing and discovering the sky during all my child and teenhood. And then as a young adult, I felt uh, the desire to get more involved and to choose a precise domain of interest. And I choose the planets simply because they are objects that can change on a short time scale, providing a never ending area of curiosity. It was back in the mid 90s. And at that time, I was drawing Mars and Jupiter 
with always in mind the objective to try to understand what I was observing, not only to make a nice picture. And this has always been my main angle of view. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. So you did drawings then, actually. Yes, I began to uh, with drawing the planets uh, before uh, buying a, a webcam uh, a few years uh, <laughs> after. <laughs> very good, very good. So you're obviously familiar with the Alpo. How what's it done yes. to stimulate your interest in planetary astronomy? Um, I, can you repeat? Yeah, what has the ALPO done to stimulate? your ah. interest in planetary astronomy? Well, that's a good question because um, when I decided to, uh, to be uh, more interested in planetary observation, uh, it was at the time when there was not really internet. And so the, the only way to, uh, to get informed was to buy magazines, of course, but also to, uh, to find books. And there was none in, uh, in, in uh, the French language. So I, um, I quickly uh, found uh, the book of, uh, by Don Parker, mm -hmm. Capens, and, and Dobbins. And uh, it, it was uh, marvelous because it, it, it really gave me many answers uh, of the question I, I had. And it was, um, it was really a, a great discovery. So this was actually my, my, my first um, the first time I, I got in touch with the ALPO. Very good. And are you a current member? Uh, I'm not a current member. I have been a member uh, during a time when it was easy to uh, uh, to be a member online, uh, you know. And I think that uh, a few years after, it was not possible anymore to uh, to buy online a membership. And so uh, I, I just uh, lost the um the membership but of course i am still sharing uh, all my data images and analysis with uh, the lpo well i will see what i can do about getting you a membership yes that thanks <laughs> all right so let's talk about the book planetary yes. astronomy T tell us about it. How, how did it come about well it, it really started when i found uh, the, the podcast book because um during that time i was a student and it was um already evident to my eyes that that writing was something where I was, um, uh, it was easy for me and fun to, to write things, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, it was back in that time that I, I decided uh, that one year I, I will uh, publish a book about that on my own. <laughs> mm. It was, a, it, it is an old dream actually. Yeah, it's it's a it's a beautiful book. I mean, it, it's it's it, you did not spare any expense on even the paper. I mean, the paper is gorgeous. It's I have it right here on my desk, and I'm looking at it. And it's it's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, now, I, apparently, you it was originally printed in 2015. Uh, can you repeat? Yeah, uh, the book was printed first in 2015. Yes, yes. that that was all in French, right? Yes, it was in French. Okay, and are there any changes from that edition other yes, than the uh, language to now? Yes, there are. Um, uh, the, the points that have been uh, changed are uh, some additional comments about uh, the CMO sensors, uh, uh -huh. some new tutor tutorials about softwares like like AutoStackert and Winjipos. Uh, for example, when we um, published a French issue, uh, AutoStackert was at mm -hmm. the uh, second um, second issue. I don't know what uh, you call that. And uh, now it is on its third issue. And um, the new book, the English book, uh, has updated uh, its uh, advices um, with auto stackers free. Okay. And uh, there are also some updates about the activities observed on the planet. Um, and many figures have been changed with better images, and some have been added too. Okay. And um, I, I would like to add a point to add a point there because um, it is important to keep in mind that um, the book ensures as much as possible that any processing advice or rule described is going to remain valuable whatever the software used. Um, and it's true that even in in the years to come, if some software has changed, um, we, we have tried to, 
to make things. Uh, so the reader will still find um, adequate advices in the pages uh, that can be adapted to a new software, for example. Okay. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's very well put together. Everything makes sense. It's a very logical order. I really, really like it. Now, you have other contributors to the book, too, besides yourself. Yes. And uh, yes, we have we are uh, seven um, contributors. Uh, I have personally written uh, a bit uh, half of the book, but um, I wanted to uh, to build a team because uh, there are some areas where I, I am personally less skillful. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the first one is uh, Christian Villadrich. And Christian has some strong and wide knowledge in understanding and modeling the optics of telescopes, as well as the astronomical cameras or the observing conditions. So I am trusting him to write the instruments and camera chapters mainly, and the greatest part of the chapter about the resolution and the observing conditions. Outside the book, Christian is also um, a super solar observer he has recently directed a similar book about observing the sun, uh, mm. the sun that came out under the same collection. So okay. I don't know if you have heard about it. No, I have not yet. It is a really a great, great book. Okay. <laughs> Looks like um, one I have to get. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know that the, the LPO have a, a solar section, I, yes, I believe. We do. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's nice. Uh, second came, uh, comes Marc Delcroix. Uh, Marc is an observer that started astronomy very closely to my own path, being curious about the planetary phenomena, and he has later developed a dedicated interest into professional and amateur cooperation. Mm. He is deeply involved in that area and is always part of the organization of the pro am session of the European European Planetary Science Congress that happen every year in Europe. Uh, do you know that, the, the EBSC? No, I'm I not familiar with that. Oh, it's a famous uh, scientist uh, conference. I, I think the, the equivalent in the United States is the, um, uh, I don't know the word, but there is, a, there is one too. And uh, sometimes uh, both uh, conferences uh, made uh, make uh, a joint meeting. Oh, wow. Yes, so it's really a nice, uh, nice conference, and uh, he has co-signed an impressive number of professional papers as an amateur, mainly uh, about uh, Saturn and uh, Neptune observation. So uh, they are papers where you are going to find um, professional data and amateur data. Hmm. So it's uh, it's very nice, and his contribution to the book is essentially about science and image analysis, but he has also written the full uh, Saturn chapter. Okay. Uh, then comes uh, Giuseppe Monacchino. Uh, actually, he's the only one who is not uh, from France. He's from uh, from Belgium. Oh. <laughs> and uh, he has initially, he was initially involved into analyzing Venus imaging, and he has written the chapters about uh, Mercury and Venus. Uh, so now we have Frédéric Burgeot, and Frédéric Burgeot is uh, the only contributor who is not a digital imager. His main interest is to draw celestial objects mm -hmm. uh, directly at the eyepiece, and he is really good at this. He has written a very interesting chapter about visual yes. observing, uh, which is, by the way, also of interest even for a pure digital imager because it really makes clear the way that the concept of contrast is to be understood. So this is a very interesting chapter for everyone. Yeah, I, I, within the ALPO, I run the training program, which mm -hmm. teaches amateurs how to make observations. And we, only, we don't deal with imaging. We only deal yes. with drawing. Of and course. I really got a lot out of his chapter. I really did. And I'm, I'm actually going to put some of that into the training program. Yes, it is really good, really good chapter. And uh, even if myself, I am now only a digital imager, mm -hmm. uh, I, I always insist on the fact that uh, even if you are not uh, observing visually or if you are not drawing planets, 
it is still uh, relevant to just take a direct look at the eyepiece to see what the planet looks like in the reality. It is um, it, it is really going to help someone to uh, to to process the images, uh, especially from the point of view of the colors. So um, mm. even today, it is important to uh, to take a look. Yes, yes. Before you put a camera on a telescope, put your eye to the telescope. Yes, just during a few minutes, uh, just yep. look uh, <laughs> through the telescope. Very good. And who, who, um, else, who else do we have? Yes, uh, we have uh, two uh, more modest contributors uh, from the content point of view only, of course. Uh, Jean-Jacques Poupeau, uh, he's someone who is uh, also very skillful about telescope optics. Actually, he has made several through his life, and his most impressive achievement is a machine that automatically prefigure a telescopic mirror. And he has also uh, made uh, his current cast grand telescope with several secondary mirrors that have been hand figured. So it's uh, really uh, quite impressive. And uh, the last contributor is Jean-Pierre Prost, who is also an excellent French observer that is known for having introduced in the French community the interest of uh, using astronomical dispersion correctors. And uh, finally, I want to add that uh, we have also another person in the book that is not part of the main contributors, but has written something as a guest contributor, who is Jean-Luc d'Auvergne. Jean-Luc is a journalist at the French magazine Ciel et Espace, as well as a first-class planetary imager, but also, also someone who has deep scientific knowledge about astronomy and its techniques. He has written a very good uh, article about the interest of using the, the, the occultation of celestial objects to learn things about them. And so uh, that's all. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Uh, I'd like to talk about one chapter in particular, yes. just to, to kick this off, uh, chapter three, observing conditions, because it, it it is not covered well in any other document I've ever looked at. This You really broke down observing, uh, figuring out your observing conditions. Can you talk about that? Yes, yes um, it's, it's a really interesting and important chapter, uh, because I don't know if uh, you know the, um, the, the um, the phrase by, uh, I believe it is André Couder in front, that was always saying uh, the, the worst part of the instrument is the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's said in every language. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So uh, the chapter just emphasizes the fact that uh, you must take care um, of every part of the instrument chain uh, because there are several levels level of turbulence uh, of course, you must uh, take care that your instrument is uh, what you call in temperature, mm -hmm. that it must be at the same temperature as the outside. And there are several ways that um, the instrument itself can uh, produce turbulences. And uh, another uh, interesting uh, point uh, is that uh, for me, one observer is able to, um, to anticipate uh, the best night, uh, uh, once he gets um, informed uh, of uh, what are the, the good atmospheric conditions that usually, usually at his site are going to produce a good thing. And um, at this chapter, you have uh, basically uh, my main experience as an observer of the Western uh, France coast, where it is uh, for example, evident that when the wind uh, comes uh, from the ocean, the thing is very good. And when uh, they come uh, from the east, uh, it is uh, very bad. And this is something that has, um, be, that has been noticed. But every uh, planetary observer in France uh, that live, uh, for example, in Paris or in uh, Brittany, and I believe that in uh, Great Britain, uh, it is the same. So uh, the lesson is to, uh, whenever you are uh, on Earth, um, it is interesting to, uh, to gather, uh, for example, the, um, the map of atmospheric pressure of uh, the jet stream of the local winds. And uh, after a time, you are going to, uh, to see that uh, there are some patterns that 
make that favorize uh, make favorable the good thing and other that are going to produce a bad thing so it is quite important because you are going to be able to to anticipate the, some of the, the best nights it is a bit um, a complicated area of uh, uh, of analysis because uh, some uh, for example uh, um, uh, some nights uh, you believe that uh, you are going to get a good seeing mm -hmm. and it is going to be poor actually it was uh, uh, the situation uh, uh, last evening for me I know I I asked you to uh, uh, to uh, how do you say that to uh, uh, postpone to the care yeah. postpone to the podcast one day postpone yeah. the podcast because I wanted to observe Jupiter last night and actually mm -hmm. it was very poor seeing uh. so, <laughs> so I made no images and uh, and I really believe that uh, the thing uh, was going to be good so it, it is really a complicated area but uh, it is um it is important to to try to anticipate things. So maybe any advice that I have described in this chapter is not going to is not going to apply directly for you, but uh, you can inspire you uh, from that to uh, to build your own uh, your own anticipation. That's that's very true. I mean, I've had many nights where I look outside and it's crystal clear. It's per yes. looks perfect. Then I look at Jupiter and it's a boiling mess. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why. And you also mentioned a good point, uh, or in, in that chapter, you also talk about uh, cooling down the telescope, getting the telescopes yes. to the proper temperature. And every telescope, every telescope type is different. Yes. Uh, from, a, from a Newtonian, an open tube Newtonian, to a refractor, to a Schmidt Cassegrain, -Kass Maksudov, or whatever. Yes, so it is important to um, to to know um, or to to evaluate uh, how much time your telescope is going to uh, uh, to ask you to uh, to cool, and uh, there are also some uh, some good insight uh, from Christian in this chapter um, about what sites are best in the point of view. Uh, of the very local condition. So we are not going to talk anymore about the jet stream, for example, but just uh, you are, um, if you are, for example, uh, located uh, in town or not, if you have uh, a water area next to you or not. And there are many um, bad ideas about that because uh, I think that um, we have always told that uh, observing in town is not a good thing because uh, uh, the buildings are supposed to, uh, to, um, to send some, uh, some heat. I don't know what uh, the exact word about to radiate some heat off them. Yeah, to radiate heat, and actually, um, it it is not really uh, really true. Uh, I have observed myself um, almost only uh, in towns, even in big towns, because uh, I uh, I've lived in Paris for six years, and uh, the, the thing there uh, for planets. Is, is can be really good, so um, we need to uh, to uh, to change about to change a bit uh, our uh, sight about uh, tones, for example. Mm, very good. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that chapter. Like I said, I that's not a subject that's very that's not addressed really in many publications, and it's something that it can make or break an observing night. Yes. 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 Yeah. That's great. Now you also get in this, this book is for the observer yes. and it, it really is. It's, 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 it's geared toward the observer. Yes. There's the visual observer. Yes. But there's also a lot of things on imaging, but I like the discussion that goes throughout is analyzing the data beyond going beyond just making a simple observation. Yes. You know, can you talk yes. about the thought process behind that? Yes. Um, it, it was important for us to uh, to gather many information about how you uh, you understand the data and how you can analyze it. And um, there are many uh, fantastic tools today that, that can be used. Uh, mainly, I think that we are talking about the WinGPS software. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, it, it's, quite, it's quite fantastic because uh, from the processing point of view, you can uh, derotate uh, the, the planets on the video or images. So you can, um, so you can increase the total time of capture, but you can also uh, build the maps. It is very easy with that software. You can also calculate the, um, the exact position of a detail and you can calculate uh, the way it uh, drifts during the time. It is very important for, uh, for Jupiter and also for Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, um, of course. And uh, you must know the JUPOS project, which is um, entirely based mm -hmm. on wind JUPOS measurements. Right. And so uh, we, we have tried to... Uh, to put their um, precise information for anyone to uh, uh, to be able to uh, to use WinGPS, for example, maybe you are not uh, a, a long-running analyzer yourself, but uh, you may just want to uh, to know uh, when uh, a given detail detail is going to be. Uh, to be observable uh, during the night to come. And so uh, the, the book also uh, teaches you uh, how to do that. Yeah, it breaks down. I mean, there, there isn't a subject that's covered in there that doesn't belong. And I can't think of anything that's missing. So I, I, I'm gushing over this book because I really like it. I mean, it's, it's one of the best planetary observing books I've ever seen. It's, you guys did a fantastic job with it. Thanks. Amazing. Yeah. Now, uh, is there any other chapters you'd like to talk about? What I think we, we can uh, say a word about uh, the world's second part, which is a, a digest of uh, what can be observed on the planet. And um, uh, I think that uh, this is not only relevant for people who enjoy to follow the planet, but as well for amateurs that just like to take pretty pictures. Uh, one of my convictions is that a very good imager our drawer must have some minimal insight of what is going on the planet he is observing. So this will help him to apply a better processing, for example, or to see more if he is looking directly through the eyepiece. And uh, what's more, I think that it's always more interesting when you know uh, something about the object you are observing. So um, it was really an objective to uh, to put this second part where the activity of the planet is going to be described uh, in detail, you know? Mm -hmm. very, yeah, that's very good. That's a good way to look at it. Uh, how's the sales of the book going? Well, uh, very good. Actually, we have sold uh, three quarters of all the issues that have been printed in uh, less than a year. Oh, nice. Yeah, yes, and, nice. and, it's, and it's, it's it's pretty affordable. Uh, it's I think fifty nine euros, which converts to about sixty eight US dollars, and it's shipped from France, right? Yes. Yeah, and I was amazed. I I ordered it, and I think I had it in a week. So all the way out to California. So I was pretty impressed by that too. Yes. So I will I will uh, put, I will put all the ordering information in the show notes so people can click on there. And there's a nice little website right. set up that shows the book and how to order. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, well, no, I think that uh, we are talking about uh, the main thing. Thank you. All right. Well, Krista, I really want to thank you for coming on the podcast today. This is very interesting. And I hope people get up, go out there and get this book. It belongs on every planetary astronomer's bookshelf. Many thanks, Tim. All right. Well, that will do it for this episode of the Observer's Notebook Podcast. I again want to really thank, direct from France, uh, Christophe Pellier for coming on and talking about this amazing, amazing book. I hope everybody goes out there and gets it. We upload a new episode of the Observer's Notebook on the 1st and 15th of every month. You can subscribe to us on iTunes. If you do, please rate and review us. I really appreciate it. And you can also listen to us on Apple Radio, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Google Play, Stitcher, Amazon Echo, and Spotify. You can help support the podcast by donate, 
donating to it via Patreon. You can give up to $35 a month, where you will receive one year's membership to the Alpo and producer credits on the podcast. And with that, I want to thank our very special producers of this podcast, Steve Seedentop and Michael Moyer, for their generous support. The link for Patreon, as well as the link for the Alpo, is in the show notes. You can contact me via email at cometman at cometman.net or on Twitter at, at ObserversNBPod. Until next time, my hope is you always have clear and steady skies. Thanks for listening. <laughs>